Welcome back to our channel Sankalp Study Success. Today we are going to see about testing for prime number. Here, first of all, what is a prime number is? We all know when a number is divided by itself and with one only that means a number is having only two factors that is one and itself then such numbers are known as prime numbers now let us see some of the examples that is 2 3 5 7 11 and so on are the prime numbers which we know now how to test whether a given number is prime or not that means whether 7 is really prime or not that means we have a theorem let us see into the theorem and before that prime numbers they have an application in cryptography see here prime testing have become important in the applications of number theory to cryptography we will have an application in cryptography also for testing the prime number so how do we test the number is prime let us see the theorem which is an important theorem again so every integer n greater than or equals to 2 has a prime factor that means what if you take any integer which is greater than or equal to 2 we have already considered 7 let's go with the same one 7 is greater than or equal to 2 yeah this statement is true correct now let's prove that every number greater than or equal to 2 they have a prime factors now how do we prove it by using mathematical induction we prove this theorem let us see that initially if n is equals to 2 that means 2 is a prime factor of n that means for n is equals to 2 initially that means the step 1 when n is equals to 2 2 is a prime factor of n now coming to the inductive hypothesis that means the step 2 suppose m is a positive integer such that m greater than or equal to 2 here s of m that means n m is greater than or equals to 2 that means 2 3 4 and so on all the integers comes into it correct so s of m will become s of 2 s of 3 s of 4 and so on up to s of n correct so that means 2 3 and 4 all these integers will have the prime factors when in the first step when n is equals to 2 2 is a prime factor here when a number greater than or equal to 2 will also have the prime factor correct so see here According to mathematical induction, we will prove the first step for n is equals to 2. Then we will also prove it for k and also k plus 1. Correct? That means here for k is nothing but m. We have already proved it. Now we will prove it for m plus 1. See here, consider m plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2. In each and every step, we are considering the same greater than or equal to 2, right? In the previously we have considered m greater than or equal to 2 now we are considering m plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 see here here we have considered m greater than or equal to 2 now we are considering m plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 okay if m plus 1 is prime then m plus 1 is a prime factor of m plus 1 previously we have seen if 2 is prime then 2 is a prime factor of n n is nothing but again 2 right so in the same way if m plus 1 is prime then m plus 1 is a prime factor of m plus 1. Now what happens m plus 1 if it is a prime factor then it's fine. If it is a composite number then you will have a prime factors as u and v. That is m is equals m plus 1 is equals to u v. That means if there are more than one factor for a prime number then you can say that the number is a composite number. So, by inductive hypothesis, by mathematical induction, we have proved it that prime factor of m plus 1, which is also a prime, see here, which is also a prime factor of m plus 1. m plus 1 has a prime factor. That means any number which is greater than or equal to 2 will have prime factors. So, 
This theorem says that any number is greater than or equal to 2 will have prime factor. How do we prove it? By using the mathematical induction by considering initially as n is equal to 2, then by considering n is greater than or equal to 2, and then by considering n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2, we can prove it. Correct? Now, Now let us see one more theorem, one more note which is the very important one that is if n greater than 1 is a composite integer till now we have considered n greater than 2 was a prime one now we are considering it for composite there exists if there if n is greater than 1 is a composite integer then it there exists p by n sorry p by n or p square less than or equal to n generally we use p square less than or equal to n so that it will be very easy for us it, uh, which is also we can write it as p less than or equals to root n when square root goes to that side it becomes square uh, when square goes to that side it becomes square root correct so both are one and the same now how do we prove this p square is less than or equal to n see here working rule for algorithm if n is 2 verify if n is 2 then n is prime generally 2 is a prime number if n is 2 then it is prime okay it's clear till now now verify whether 2 divides n that means you have taken an integer called n now you are checking whether this n will divide 2 or not divide 2 or not if it divides 2 that means if it is dividing 2 there are, there might be two cases it may divide it with the 2 it may not be dividing with the 2 now if 2 divides n then n is not prime that means n is having a factor of 2 that means it is having more than two factors one n itself that is 2 that means it is not a prime number now if it is not dividing n then you will go to the next step that is you will find all the odd primes of p less than or equal to root n that means p square less than or equal to n you will find all the odd primes of p square less than or equal to root n now Coming to the fourth step, verify whether p divides n. So we will see whether this p is dividing n or not. If p is a prime, then you will go to the step 3 again and you will find the next odd number and you will see whether it is divided or not. Let's see with an example so that you will be much more clear. That is 133, whether it is a prime or not. Let us see what is the first step we need to see that whether 2 is dividing this number or not whether the number is divided by 2 or not by the divisibility rule of 2 the last digit is 3 over here that means it is not divided by 2 2 will not divide 2 does not divide 133 That means what 2 is not a factor of 133. Now we will go to the second step. What is the second step? P square less than or equals to n. That means what? We need to find all the odd primes which is less than or equals to 133. Is P square less than or equals to 133. Here the given number is n, right? We are substituting in place of n. So P square less than or equals to 133. What are all the odd primes which are less than or equal to 133? 3, 3 square is 9, less than or equal to 133. The next prime is 5, 5 square is 25, which is less than or equal to 133. 7, 7 square is 49, which is less than or equal to 133. Again, the next uh, number is 11, 11 square is 121, which is less than or equal to 133. And the next one is 13, 13 is 169, which is greater than 133. So, we will not consider 13 here. That means only 3, 5, 7, 11 are the odd primes which are less than or equal to 133. Now, what do we need to check whether these odd primes are dividing 133 or not? Correct. 
थ्री डस थ्री विल डिवाइड वन थर्टी थ्री नो बिकॉज द सम ऑफ द डिजिट्स आर सेवन दैट मीन्स थ्री विल नॉट डिवाइड फाइव वे द फाइव विल डिवाइड वन थर्टी थ्री नो वे द सेवन नो वे द इलेवन नो दैट मीन्स ऑल द ऑर्ड प्राइम्स विच आर लेस दैन नॉट इक्वल टू वन थर्टी थ्री विल नॉट डिवाइड वन थर्टी थ्री दैट मीन्स वन थर्टी थ्री इज अ प्राइम नंबर Okay, is it clear? Let us recall once again. Let us have a small recap. That means whether number is we need to check whether a number is prime or not. That is, we have taken a number as one thirty three. We are checking whether it is a prime or not. The first step is we need to take we need to take that two is dividing one thirty three or not. We need to check it. No, here in this case two is not dividing one thirty three. That means we'll proceed with the second step. That is p square less than or equal to n. What is p square? We need to find all the odd primes. The square of all the odd primes should be less than or equal to n. Here, all the odd primes which we got are three, five, seven, and eleven. They are not. No odd prime is dividing one thirty three. So we can say that one thirty three is a prime number. Let us take one more example so that. it becomes clear and perfect let us take n is equals to 287 we need to check whether 287 is prime or not that means now first we will see whether 2 is dividing 2 is not dividing 287 correct who is not dividing 287 because the Unit digit is seven. That means it is not divisible by two. Now we will proceed further. P square less than or equals to n is the second step. We need, that means what P square is less than or equals to two eighty seven. You need to find all the odd num odd primes, squares of all the odd primes such as it is they are less than or equal to two eighty seven. Now let us find out three square is nine, five square is twenty five, seven square is forty nine, eleven square is one twenty one. Is correct. Thirteen square is one sixty nine, which is also less than or equal to two eighty seven. Then it comes seventeen. Seventeen square is two eighty nine, which is greater than two eighty seven. So we don't consider seventeen. Now we need to check all these numbers are dividing two eighty seven or not. If they are not dividing, then two eighty seven is prime. If it is dividing, then two eighty seven is not a prime number. Three. Will three will divide two eighty seven? The sum of the digits of two eighty seven is seventeen. That means three is not dividing two eighty seven. Five. The unit digit is not five or zero, so it is not dividing two eighty seven. Seven. Two eighty seven is dividing five. Is uh, seven is dividing two eighty seven? Yeah. Forty one times of seven will divide two eighty seven. So we can say that two eighty seven is the Prime composite number. That means it is not prime. Hope you understand this topic. Thank you for for watching the video.